Hey, good morning, guys. It's Evan. This is Mikey, my about eight foot long male guy on a bow. I'm just shining a light on because it's hard to see him in there. Here's Connie, an adult female. Um, she's in her hot, humid high box right now, which brings me to the subject of today's video. I'm trying to start a series called Locality Bow Basics, which I'm hoping are just short nuts and bolts videos about some of the key concepts and knowledges you need to have to maintain a collection like this. And today's subject is about measuring and maintaining humidities for boas like this. And um, I guess the first thing I will tell you in the first understanding I would like you to have is about relative humidity with boas. And it's just a general concept. And basically, relative humidity means that warmer air can hold more moisture than cooler air. And so... Um, Relative humidity of say 70% at 80 degrees is wetter than relative humidity of 70% at 70 degrees. And how you can play that, put that into play is getting a sense for your cages and how humid they are and um, by looking at condensation. And so I don't actually measure with a hydrometer um, or anything like that my humidity is in this room. If you're just starting out, go ahead and um, get one so that you have can get a feel for what like 60-70% humidity is um, in the room and in your cages. And basically, I will say that at like 70 degrees, 60 to 70% humidity feels clammy. And at 80%, 60 to 70% uh, percent humidity feels nice. And the reason I want you to understand about relative humidity and um, condensation and dew points is because in your cage, you have a heat gradient. Um, so warm side over here, based on the heat panel to cooler side over here. And if you see right here, the um, on the cool end, the glass only is just condensating on this bottom like quarter. And that's because the room is cooler than the cage itself. The glass is um, not very well insulated. And so the glass itself is cooler on the inside of the cage. And so right here, um, it is below the dew point, meaning that it's just, it's over 100% humidity um, right at the contact point of the glass. And so when you can see a cage like this, where it is just barely fogging in the corner on the cool end, you know that you're at 100% right over there, and you can make a safe assumption that you are pretty high humidity over here. So that's just something I will tell you is kind of when I look at cages, um, I had, this is the day before I would come back in and re-wet and things. So they're about at the driest. And so most of these cages are just going away. So you can see they're just drying out. But if you pull these out, like even this one, this is a wetter cage. Um, you'll see it's not dripping wet all the way through here. So that's just something I would tell you to um, be looking out for. I think a lot of people like pat themselves on the back when their cages are dripping wet all over and be like, yeah, I'm nice and humid. And you're actually over 100% humidity and you're about to invite problems into your collection with hygiene and issues like that. So that's a big idea. And the other big concept I would like you to understand is the concept of micro environments. And basically that's the idea that just like heat, your snakes, have variable humidity needs. And so that means that depending on the time of day, their life cycle, they don't always need super humid and they don't always need less humid. So what you should be providing in your cage are micro environments. And there's different ways to do that. But this cage is actually a good cage because it's set up with mulch to show you. But here I have a plastic box that's trapping moisture and actually some heat from that lamp as well. So underneath that box, it is warmer and wetter than anywhere else in the cage. That's his warmest and wettest microenvironment for this little jungle python, or not jungle, diamond python rather. There's some, this area over here, I water it more heavily than over here. So warmest and wettest, warm and wet, cooler, drier. That's basically how it works. And these boa cages, humid hide boxes. These are just plastic boxes full of wet mulch, okay? And over here in these racks, again, mulch under that box. It is warmer and wetter than anywhere else in that cage. And that's why that little Bolivian's under there right now. So that's a big picture idea behind that. And another important issue um, I would say is you don't want the surface of your substrate wet. Um, snakes sitting on wet substrate invites scale rot. Here's a good example where you can see the surface of this cage is dry, the substrate surface, but there's actually still moisture in here. So you can provide humidity releasing substrates and still have the surface dry. Here's a tree boa cage. He's up there. If he wants, he can go into that big pile of wet moss 
and yet it's microenvironment human hides. So these are just core concepts about humidity. Um, and humidity is variable. You want it generally humid, but you don't need it dripping wet. I, the only active humidification I do in this room is that I run a humidifier in the winter um, just because otherwise this whole house would get so dry, it'd be uncomfortable for humans. And I try to humidify this room just to the point where there's no condensation on the outside windows because it's freezing weather outside. And I like to run the humidity or the humidifier in here to the point where the windows don't, don't get wet because you're going to start causing problems with your house. But just walk that line to where you don't have condensation in your windows so you can get about as humid in here as possible without the windows condensating, which means in the wintertime, my uh, relative humidity is probably about 60% in here. And then I provide humid environments. The way I control my moisture is simply by ventilation and cage dynamics and substrate choices. If you can't control it like that and you're thinking about you need to be misting every day or adding a power mist system in there, um, I would tell you to be thinking about your cage dynamics more than something active and uh, active like that. So there's a key concept for you. I hope that helps you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.